Welcome to the Alabama Football Report. It is overreaction Sunday, so that you guys know what that means by now, I believe. Um, look, last night was a pretty brutal win for Alabama last night. The final box score does not tell the whole story of how they played last night. Um, so basically what I did was I went on the internet and I took some of the craziest takes. I even took one of my takes in there and I'm just going to, uh, you know, go through all of those and discuss whether I think it's true or whether it's, um, you know, a wild take. So that's what, you know, we do here on Overreaction Sunday. But first, before we get into it, I just want to touch on this as well. Ariel Schaefer last night tweeted after the game that Quandarius Robinson told them in the post game that... His dad passed away two days ago, and man, I, I could not imagine, you know, going through something like that and then having to play a football game just two days later. Um, you know, we forget a lot of times about the human element when it comes to, you know, both both uh, college football and just sports in general. So, you know, I just want to give some condolences to Quandarius Robinson, his entire family, um, because man, I could not imagine doing something like that. So get in the comments for me, spam34, support Quandarius Robinson in his family. Uh, like I said, man, just a, just a very tragic, tragic thing to have to go through. And uh, look, my heart's out to Quandarius Robinson and his family. So spam those 34s for me right now. All right, the first overreaction for Sunday here. Elijah Pritchett has won the right tackle battle. You, we need to pump the brakes on this just a little bit. Look, there is no excusing how bad Wilk and Formby played in this game last night. But at the end of the day, Elijah Pritchett only played six snaps in this game as well. Look, Wilk and Formby had three really, really bad holding penalties that will break down even further um, on the show today. But, oh man, Elijah Pritchett, uh, we just forget the fact that how he played last week. He was not very good last week either. I get it, it was on the left side. Um, but look, there are still just a lot of things when it comes to Elijah Pritchett that he struggles with, in particular pass protection. Look, the coaching staff said that Wilk and Formby, they wanted him to get some more push when it comes to the run game, and they want Elijah Pritchett to be more consistent when it comes to pass protection. Like I said, we saw last week how he was just not very good at all in pass protection, gave up, uh, you know, a sack, had two more quarterback hurries. So I think this uh, this battle is definitely going to go into next week as well. Hopefully you have Caden Proctor back at the left side so Elijah Pritchett can really focus on the right side um, along with Wilk and Forby in that right tackle battle. But to me right now, I don't think this job is settled quite yet. But let me know right now in the comments section, do you guys think Elijah Pritchett won the right tackle job last night. Uh, for me, it's a no. I Like I said, he only played six snaps in the game. Yes, Alabama really started to turn things around when he went in there, but I think it was more indicative on the fact that South Florida's defense was pretty tired and Alabama was able to just run it down their throats towards the end of the game. So let me know at the pinned comment, do you think Elijah Pritchett won the right tackle battle? Type Y for yes or N for no. All right, and uh, yeah, I keep seeing this one out there, and frankly, it's, it just uh, makes me a little bit angry. Um, look, there's a lot of people out there that still think Ty Simpson would be better suited running uh, the, the system as quarterback one. And I just gotta, I just gotta say stop on this. I think it's just an absolutely ridiculous take. I love what Ty Simpson can do for you. I love his ability, and I love the future and what it can bring for for Alabama in the coming years. But look, man, there is no getting around this. Jalen Milrow is your starting quarterback. And I did not think he played, you know, up to his standard, our standard, anybody's standard last night. But that is not going to change the fact that he is still your starting quarterback for this team. Um, there, there is not going to be any change in that. Look, I said I wanted to see him throw the ball 20, 25 times. He wasn't the best in throwing those. Now, I will say personally, it might be an excuse. Fine, whatever, you can call it that. But I thought our wide receivers were getting held a lot last night, so that didn't help him out either. Um, you know, the pass protection in general wasn't very good. And some of those mistakes were on him as well, not excusing him from that either. But he did have a 74-yard touchdown run 
wiped off the board. You got to take that into account. He still had four touchdowns, two passing, two running in this game. There's no excusing the fumble on the two-yard line. That was absolutely god-awful, and that is something that'll uh, you know, make you want to uh, jump off a building at the end of the day. But look, Jalen Milrow is the starting quarterback. You guys got to stop with the Ty Simpson stuff. He will be your starter next year. Just let it happen. Give it time. There were so many people that wanted Tyler Buckner and Ty Simpson to be the quarterbacks last year, two against South Florida, and you see what happened last year. Number three here, the penalty boys are back. This is the truest statement that has ever been spoken in the English language. Alabama last night had 13 penalties for 120 yards, and that was only those penalties that got enforced at the end of the day. They had even more than that, but um, look, we're going to break down all the penalties that Alabama had in this game. But first, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Game Time. Game Time is the only ticketing app that I use, guys. If I wanted to go to an Alabama game or any Alabama event, I would use Game Time to get my tickets there. Game Time even has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks curation makes it easier to save more on sports. They've got concerts on there. They've got comedy shows on there. They've got theater on there. My girlfriend loves theater, so we got to mix that in every now and then as well. The Game Time Picks feature filters out all the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you guys do not have to waste time searching through thousands and thousands of tickets. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer you get to the start of the event. So if you want to do something last minute, you can do that on Game Time. Game Time has killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the lowest prices guaranteed. Look, one of my favorite features is the panoramic view from your seat. You just kind of look around. It's like you're sitting in the seat that you're going to buy. So there are no, you know, surprises when you get to your seat. And they also have the lowest price guaranteed. Game time will credit you 100 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Create an account and use code Chat Sports for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Check out GameTime.co for last-minute tickets. Terms do apply, but again, create an account and redeem code C H A T S P O R T S Chat Sports for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app today. What time is it? It's Game Time. I thought this was a really, really, you know, really. Good statistic tweet from Tony Sukalis last night during the game. Wilkin Formby at one point in the game last night had three holding penalties that wiped out 129 total yards. Now, the bulk of that was on the 74-yard Jalen Milrow touchdown run, uh, but we're going to break down all the penalties that Alabama had right now because so many of these can be preventable and at the end of the day, it just hurts you at all levels of the game, especially, you know, on offense. Damani Jackson in the first quarter had a hold. Um, you know, you don't want your uh, DBs to be a holding. Obviously, that means they probably got cooked on the play. But, uh, you know, those things happen every now and then. Um, I, I don't think Damani Jackson really got beat a lot. Maybe it was because he got caught holding a couple of times. Geno Vandermark was not very good in this game. You had Elijah Pritch, or excuse me, you had Caden Proctor did not play in this game. So what Alabama did was they took Tyler Booker, put him at left tackle, and then put Geno Vandermark at left guard. And for the most part, that ain't it either. Um, you know, look, Tyler Booker also had a false start here. That's just one of those mental things you cannot have happen. And then, man, in the second quarter, all hell broke loose when it comes to Geno Vandermark and Wilkin Formby. They were very, very bad. Um, starting off, Geno Vandermark, Wilkin Formby, two holding calls. And then I thought that intentional grounding by that they called on Jalen Milrow. Personally, I thought that was kind of a bad call. I thought there was a receiver in the area there. And um, I thought I, I also thought it probably should have been rough in the passer because they kept diving at Jalen Milrow's ankles, which what I thought was rough in the passer, but I guess not when it comes to these referees last night. And then you had that other holding from Wilkin Formby. It wiped off a 53-yard pass reception to Kobe Prentice that would have also had defensive pass interference on that as well. Um, look. I mean, that's just one of those in the 129 yards that got taken off the 
taken off the board for Alabama in this game. Geno Vandermark had another false start, and then Wilkin Formby had that other holding call in this uh, in the second quarter. They took a 74-yard touchdown run from Jalen Milrow off the board. These are the things that absolutely kill you in games that the competition is going to be better, and you cannot – do this kind of stuff when you're playing better competition. It's just bad. I think the targeting on Justin Jefferson was textbook, but I hate the fact that that is targeting. Look, at the end of the day, it was kind of a normal tackle. He just dipped his head. It was the crown of the helmet, but, you know, uh, it's just was not, uh, you know, it, it is what it is, I guess. Then you had Another holding from Wilkin Formby there in the third. Jihad Campbell had a face mask. Tyler Booker had a block in the back that really he did not need to keep blocking the uh, block in the end there. Uh, you know, he gets outside of him. You just let him go. There's nothing you can do at that point. So this is one of those things, man. 13 penalties for 120 yards. That is a recipe for disaster against better competition. So let me know your one-word reaction to Alabama versus South Florida last night. There was uh, a lot of ugly in this game, so be creative for me. Get in the comment section and let me know your one-word reaction to Alabama's win over South Florida. Overreaction number four, look, I, this is mine. I thought the DBs kind of got cooked last night uh, multiple times. If you, saw, if you go back and watch the game, Byron Brown missed multiple touchdowns in this game. Um, I remember in particular, Red Morgan got cooked on the right side twice. And then Jalen and Bakwe, I believe it was, got cooked on the left side a couple of times on back-to-back -back plays. Those all four plays should have went for touchdowns for South Florida early in the game. Would have put Bama behind early. So I honestly thought the DBs got a little bit lucky last night. Like I said, they are going to have to play better when you play better competition, man, because you are not going to get away with playing like you did last night. And I've seen this one plenty of times. I'm sure most of you guys are thinking it as well. We are not ready for a team like Georgia right now. That's why I say partially true. Because look, Alabama, when last year when they played just a really, really bad game like this, that game versus Texas, really in particular is that game that they really started to turn things around and play a little bit better, especially you know as the season got on. Look, we're only two games in, but Georgia's in week five. You go to Wisconsin next week. You have to go to LSU this season. You have to go to Tennessee. Missouri comes to you. They're a good ball club now as well. So, I mean, look, if you play like you played last night, those are the kind of teams that can beat you um, when you play like that. And there is nothing more than what people want is to see Alabama lose four or five games this year. If they play like that, they absolutely could. So make sure you guys are subscribed right here to the Alabama Football Report. No matter good, bad, ugly, it does not matter. We will be here four, five, six times a week for videos. We will also be live for every single Alabama football game for our watch parties. So do not miss out. Make sure you are subscribed right now. That's YouTube.com slash TV.